If you can do this, it heals. Body heals on its own. That's it. Give it a big hand. Self-healing capacity. That's the philosophy of nature cure. How do we operate in nature cure? Because we know if a person is living, it can, he can heal himself. We don't have to do anything. All that we have to do is to provide the material, or provide the time, and adequate uh, what you call trust also. We have to trust, we have to give the material, and we have to give time. That's all we have to do. Then we spoke about what are the medicines that we use in nature care. No medicine. Food. The five old food medicine. Food is the medicine. The medicine we use is only food. They are of five kinds. Three sudden and two grass. Ether, air, light, water and earth. <coughs> Where the four foods can be directly eaten, the food, fifth food, earth is not directly eaten. How do we use food, earth? The plants. From the plants that grow in the earth, not all the plants, only those plants which, which can be eaten as a separate meal. Not all the plants can be used as medicine. So that's all we learnt in the morning. And then a little later we also learnt five unities of nature. Any one unity you know? Oh, yeah. Cause for all diseases. Cause for all diseases also. Health and disease. <laughs> 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 and now we learnt about unities, how to apply different elements of nature. How, how do we use the earth element for healing ourselves? How do we use the earth element as medicine? From the food that comes from the earth, we give the positive food and we avoid the negative food. What are the positive foods? Arcanin. Can you give us the positive food? Yeah. Alkaline. Where the useful materials are more, waste materials are less, or no waste material, that positive food. Where the, there is no useful material or very little useful material, and lot of waste, that's a negative food. So we have to have a deal which is profitable to us in life. Don't introduce <coughs> negative deals where we have to lose a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of time. By eating negative foods, we will be wasting our life in total. By eating positive food, we will be saving time. At the same time, our creativity and productivity will increase many more. So what about uh, different disease conditions we have seen, like uh, arthritis, rheumatism, diabetes, asthma, how do we treat them all? They are all one. For all of them we need fasting, for all of them we need water, we need sunlight and air. So how do we use sunlight for health? Vitamins. Vitamin, grow vegetables. How do we use sunlight? Sun, sun By exposing our body to sunlight. Oh, okay. Keep your head in the shade and keep your body in the sun, not for the heat, only for the light. When it starts heating, get out of the sun. If you do too much, you'll get prickly in the heat all over the body and that's not good for you. <coughs> so a little bit sunlight is very, very useful. And always your body face is always exposed to sunlight. During sunbath, keep your head in the shade, body in the sunlight, sit bare body. 
wherever possible. In the privacy of your room, if you get sunlight, expose your body, which is usually covered, to sunlight. That's how we use sunlight. There are so many developments in sunbathing that's been introduced to deal with chronic diseases like eczema, tumors, cancers, and fissures, and uh, growth in the uterus, growth in the breast, all kinds of problems. <coughs> we have a technique by which we use the lens magnifying glass to focus the sunlight in one spot and burn the place. Not burn the place. Penetrate. Penetrate without burning. How do we do that? We keep a green leaf on the top and we keep revolving the light around the uh, tumor without staying in one place. If it stays in one place, it will burn. So keep revolving it and activate it. Activate the elimination process. And after using that, put a herbal pack, grated cucumber, grated any water or any vegetable, grate it and put it in that spot and wrap it with a wet cloth. Hydrotherapy. After solar therapy, we do hydrotherapy. Anywhere there is pain, in the shoulder, in the uh, forearm, back, back side, put a tie of wet cloth. Simplest. I was working and do, during the work I had some disturbance in the stomach, in, the, in this side of the belly. I took some water from the faucet and threw it on the shirt. People said, I spilled some water. Hey, you spilled some water. Yeah. <laughs> I spilled some water. I didn't tell them why it, why that it's wet, but after five ten minutes, the pain is gone, and the cloth is also dry. So you can improvise so many hydrotherapy applications in your life and get relieved from pain. Severe headache. Sometimes it's because you are living in close quarters, breathing same air of everybody. If you go out for a little while and come back, pain is gone. Fatigue, tiresomeness, all these things, you can relieve by fresh air, oxygen. How do we use air element? By doing deep breathing, by allowing the body to expose to air, and so that the skin is also a breathing organ, not only the nose. Right? <coughs> nose does 90%, 10% of breathing is done by the skin. But the 10% of breathing that, can, that is done by the skin is more important than the 90% of breathing that, that's done by the nose. In many occasions, there was an occasion when there was a <coughs> Christmas procession uh, in Vatican City and there was a baby Jesus painted in gold and displayed and in the tableau that was moving. And in the end of the tableau, baby died. Because not her nose was open, his nose was open, but the body was painted gold. So there was no breathing by the skin and the baby. You seen James Bond gold finger? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There also he he paints his culprits gold in the body, and nobody knows how the patient died. He doesn't strangle them. He doesn't do anything. Spray paints the whole body with gold. So, uh, all those things we know that skin breathing is very, very important. Don't use soap. Soap will uh, close the pores of the skin. Apply oil and massage your body and wash it with organic powders like chickpea powder, things like that. Mm, what kind of soap are you referring to? Like I usually use organic, <laughs> organic natural soaps. Is this okay? All the soap <laughs> is the same. All the soap, the soap is the same thing. Mm. How about uh, soap nuts? It's natural nut, right? Natural. That's okay. That's good. Rita. Rita. That's very good. Salt nut. Yeah, you can put it in Chicken powder. powder. I, I or green moon bean uh, powder. Or you can do shikakai powder. That's a nut also. We grind the powder and use it to remove the oil from the body. But you don't have to remove a lot of oil from the body. Some oil in the body is okay. 
and if you keep the pores open your skin breathing becomes better so your life standard will be better and we learnt deep breathing exercise here are you here no. you are not here right hello no just here just see i can recognize <laughs> we all did breathing exercise deep breathing exercise breathe in deep hold the breath breathe out hold the breath what is the advantage of deep breathing can anybody say breathe in i think the the air can reach the, the pure air can reach into every part of the body right? improve the muscles and the capacity holding the capacity of the lung right it takes more oxygen to the the expanding of the lungs will open up new doors when we have a house with lot of doors and we use only one or two doors all the time and after a long time if you try to open another door which was never open you have to struggle to open it it will be jammed all over likewise most of us are shallow breathers we don't fully expand our lungs so several pores in the lung wall close and when we practice deep breathing again and again those pores will start opening lot of doors coming in and out we have the lungs will help in purification gaseous impurity from the blood <clears throat> when you breathe in you hold the breath and when you hold the breath you are giving enough sufficient time for the exchange of gas and by holding the breath we are allowing new doors to be open by breathing out and holding the breath what happens the magic happens please what what is that did you say please earlier the magic what is the magic that happens after you hold the door uh, after the exhalation hold the breath and what happens is body is struggling to fill the air in that spot there are several places the gas is there in the body some gas pressure here gas pressure here so many places because of gas pressure we have pain of it's not really inflammation it's just gas stuck in different parts of the body all that gas will rush towards the lung to fill it up the nature of air is to fill wherever there is no air less air they will go and fill and distribute equally right if there are two bottles connected to each other one bottle doesn't have air this air will go and fill it up right equally that's the nature so likewise all other parts of the body where there is gaseous pressure accumulated gases it will run towards the lung but it cannot enter the lungs yet but it cannot directly go to the lungs also there is a gatekeeper who checks your id card <laughs> only then they will be allowed to go who is that gatekeeper do you know Fine. the heart ah. all blood uh, blood from different parts of the body first has to go to the heart and then from the heart it goes to the lungs lungs are direct connection impure blood goes to the lungs and gets purified when the impure blood goes the like its color is almost purple blue dark blue almost purple in color they go like a train one globule after after another like a train it's called co2 train in punjab they have a cancer train <laughs> what is that cancer train about all cancer patients go into that train go to the cancer uh, treatment center wow and come back in that train full of cancer patients we have plenty in india they use pesticides and fertilizers and things mm. like that a lot of them getting cancer so also lot of our blood cells collect impurities from different parts of the body and brings it to the lungs and heart and from the heart comes to the lungs when it comes to the lungs it cannot enter the body, lungs because we have exhausted our air we have exhaled our air 
and we are holding the breath. The doors are all closed. It has been checked, the ID card has been checked by the heart and it's sending to the lungs. Lungs also, I have the ID, come on, entry. No entry yet. And when we inhale, expand the lungs, all the doors open. Come on, come on, everybody rushes into the lungs, unloads toxic gas and loads oxygen and useful gases. All the time science talks about only oxygen and carbon dioxide. But there are so many other gases which has to be thrown out. There are other so many gases which has to be taken in. <coughs> science doesn't know all that detail. Major parts of the uh, major activity of the body is to absorb oxygen, throw out carbon dioxide. That's what they talk about. Let's accept that. When it's loaded with carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide it's dark blue in color. But it's unloading and loading oxygen, you now brilliant red blood cells, they go to the heart and from the heart it supplies to the whole body, to the head, to all other parts of the body. The most important magic happens when the crevices of the brain kicks out and goes to the carbon dioxide filled blood goes to the lungs. When it comes out from the brain, it kicks out the brain cells. Each of us have stored in our brain a lot of information. Our heart board is filled, loaded with information. Hard disk, hard disk. Yeah, hard disk. Your hard disk has so much information, much more than the best computer in the world. And what is the, uh, where does it store? DNA, they say. It has memory of forefathers, or I don't know how many generations information is collected and stored in that small DNA. If you go to Washington, D.C., there is a Smithsonian Museum with a glass tower. And in the glass tower, there is a window. The glass tower is filled with resistors. They used to use resistors in television, radio, and all that. And those resistors used to carry information, store them. And there are 10,000 resistors in one glass tower and one small chip in the window. It says this one small chip is carrying the memory of this 10,000 resistors. Now the size of the chip has become even small. It used to be in computers, now we have small computers uh, like in cell phones. So much memory is carried in that one chip. Do you know the size of our DNA brain cells? Much more small, very small, and carries so much memory. You may not have gone to school, but you know everything that the doctor knows because that information is stored there. If your grandfather was a lawyer, you know all the information of a lawyer <laughs> in your DNA. Brain cells have, are carrying all that. So, her brain cell has become very active. <laughs> in our brain cells, when the carbon dioxide kicks out and goes out, lot of information is available, files are available for you to use. Just because they are available, it doesn't mean that you are using it. Like um, somebody gave me a smartphone, I don't even know how to use all the faculties or features of the computer, mm -hmm. all, all the smartphone. Where is my friend here? He said he doesn't use his smartphone anymore because it makes him depend upon something else. He is smart. So, all that I am saying is, these files become open and when somebody asks you a challenging question, suddenly you see, you have never read about it, you never know about it, but you are able to answer the question. How does it happen? Because it's all there, available. Immediately that files open and give you the information. And there was a doctor in Bombay, in, I had gone, given a public lecture, and this uh, doctor raised his hand, he says, I, I have an objection to whatever you are saying. 
They said, what? He says, you are misleading people with wrong information. I said, who are you? I, he says, I am Dr. K.R. Shankaran. I am a cardiologist practicing in Matunga, Mumbai for the last 20 years. I said, wow, wonderful. Please come on the stage. I called him to the stage and I told the public, we are honored with a, such an educated and qualified and experienced doctor here. He will enlighten us as to what is right and what's wrong. If we are saying something wrong, we should stop it right away. And we are so thankful for him to enlighten us. Doctor, could you answer our three questions? Until then, I didn't know what questions to ask him. First, I asked him, what is your objection? What was the wrong things which I was saying? He says that you were telling people that germs don't cause disease. That's wrong. We have proven in the laboratory that cholera germs cause cholera. Malaria germs cause malaria. Diphtheria germs cause diphtheria. Tubercular bacilli causes tuberculosis. We have proven in the laboratory, we know for sure. If you examine any malaria patient, you can see malaria germs there. And how are you telling people the germs don't cause diseases? This is not right. I said, oh my God, so good that you are here at least telling us, educating us. <laughs> we should not say such things if we are wrong. Answer, answer, please doctor, answer my three questions. And uh, with that we will be clarified about what is right, what is wrong. Until then I didn't know what to ask him yet. So I asked him, doctor, just to gain time. I said, if there is a cause and an effect. Is it necessary that the cause has to be there first and the effect has to come later? Or sometimes the cause comes later and the effect comes first? Don't be silly. Don't ask silly questions and waste my time. Everybody knows if it is a cause, it has to be there first. The effect has to be later. Thank you, doctor. Sorry for wasting your time. Friends, okay, doctor says, has said the cause has got to be there first in every situation and the effect has to be there next. So far I gained my time. Now suddenly a question spots out from all the available files. I asked him, I asked him Doctor, am I imagining or is it a fact that in every case of malaria, every case of diphtheria, every case of cholera and every case of so-called germ-caused diseases, there is a stage when the symptoms of the disease is present in a mild degree, but the germs are not present. Is it possible or am I imagining? Well, yes, we, we know that that's a stage of predisposition. The moment he said, I said, oh! <coughs> Friends, I was going to say something, he said, stop it. He got up from there, give me the application form for your training course. I'm joining the course. He took, the, he took the application, just walked out of the hall. Everybody clapped their hands. What did you, what did I say just now? Did you, anybody understand what I, what I asked him? Yeah, yeah. are not the cause of the disease. In every case of malaria, every case of diphtheria, mm -hmm. there is an effect of the disease, symptoms of the disease. Is a effect, right? Mm -hmm. But the germs are not present. Cause has got to be there first in every situation. He also agreed. But the cause was not present. Showing very well that germs are the products of disease, not the cause of disease. What did you understand? Germs are the products, products of disease, not the cause of disease. When a banana rots, germs come out of it. Right? We were going for a vacation, two months vacation, from North India to South India. We were in Delhi. Every vacation we go to South India for two months, summer vacation. When we were leaving, we were very close to the railway station. I told my father, home, oh, we, have, we have to go back home. I forgot something. He says, what? I said, I left two bananas on the shelf. I didn't pick it up with me. Forget it. We are not going all the way home just to pick up two bananas. We are near the station. <laughs> We don't worry about those bananas. I'll buy you another banana. 
<coughs> not that you want, I want you to buy another banana, but that's there. Quite, quite, quiet. Then we went off to South India, spent two months vacation, had a good time. When we came back, first thing I did was to rat to that shelf to see what happened to my banana. There was nothing. There was nothing. The house was locked for two months. Not even the skin. Everything gone, no germs, nothing at all. What happened, do you think? Do you know what happened? Decomposed. And where? Decomposed material also nothing there. All the bacteria in the banana came out of the banana, ate the whole thing and they also dispersed. That's exactly what happens in, a, in the filth accumulated in the body. Worms develop out of that as a product of disease. Disease is what? Accumulated filth in the body. Uh, so, would you say when when I'm like living now completely healthy, like the way you taught us, and I get, for example, stung by a malaria-infected mosquito, that uh, that the uh, that the virus doesn't break out or nothing at all. Really? In the village, in a village, there is an epidemic of malaria, but not everybody gets affected. There are some people in the same village, in the same family. Two persons are affected, one person even died, but it, two other persons are not affected at all. No malaria, nothing at all. In the same family. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Have you heard about that? Yes. Yeah. Wherever there is an epidemic, not everybody dies. <laughs> yeah. Right? Does everybody die in an epidemic? No. 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 There are some people who don't die. Why don't they die? They should also die. They don't know the rules? So bad. <laughs> they know that they better than die. I just said that to every every disease. Also HIV and AIDS. See, HIV is you have been tampering it too much. It doesn't come to you suddenly. Degeneracy disease. In that stage, you have gone beyond a certain capacity. Those accumulated cells cannot be removed. All the blood cells are so much affected, contaminated with them, and they are producing similar cells more and more. But that's like the, that's like what a virus does, right? No, no, no. When there is a lot of health, no virus can attack a healthy cell. If there are healthy cells in the body, virus cannot attack it. It can attack only sick cells, dead cells, putrefied cells. The germs will eat that. But a healthy cell, it cannot eat. So you have to generate more healthy cells in the body so that all the dirty cells will get out. And, and there is no need of vaccines? Absolutely no need of vaccines. <laughs> so they are just selling the vaccines to us? Yeah, definitely. About vaccine, let's also learn about vaccine. Vaccine is a product of this. Does anybody know how the vaccine is produced? Yes, you you inject a little bit of it into your body, don't you? You create the disease in the body. animal. Yeah. The antibodies that are produced, you yeah. extract and you use or something yeah. like that. They call it antibodies. Anti-life. Antibodies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> antibodies are anti-life. They, if you are a vegan, definitely you must not vaccinate yourself. Because it's a product of, from the animal's blood, animal's pus. They make a cow's calf lay out on the table, they tie the legs and tie the mouth and cut so many incisions on the body and allow it to rot. And then pus comes out, they suck out all the pus, throw the animal to die, they put a pig in that place. Same thing, they cut it out, make the pus, take that pus. Different pus from all different animals, six or seven different animals, they make vaccine out of that. Can it help? You can lie down. 
See, people are lying down. It's okay. So, vaccine is made from the pus of different animals. And when they putrefy and process the pus into vaccine, they say it can promote health, it can prevent disease. We are not interested in preventing disease with health. Health cannot promote health. The urine therapy or any other therapy where you introduce filth to promote health is not scientific. Science says hygiene promotes health, not filth promotes health. So let's avoid vaccination. In America, they said vaccination is compulsory for school kids. But they, I found out there is a waiver, religious waiver we can get. So I got, wrote a letter from the priest saying that they are in our religion, it is, it's, boy, it's not, a, it's prohibited to take vaccination. So we need a waiver for these kids. So they give it to you. It's in the constitution. You are, you have a right to choose the way you want to live. They cannot stop. You. So that waiver is there in every case. We have to only understand that. Supposing there is a bacteria infected in the body, it's going, uh, people think that by killing those bacteria, the disease will be gone, right? Mm. They recognize malaria germs, cholera germs. Oh, these are those germs. When they take the sample of blood, they find these germs in it. They say you will be infected with malaria germs, you have to give antibiotics, right? or vaccination to kill those germs. When during the time of war between India and Pakistan, there was a time when there was a war. So during the war, my father wore a uniform, like a military person, right? And my friends know me, my father's friends know him. In the night, he will take a torch and stop, right, stick. And Bhatti Bankaro would put off the lights after a certain time. You should put off all the lights during war time. But some people who see him in the uniform, Sharma ji, yours, Mr. Sharma? They can't believe that. In the normal days, he will be wearing different clothing. And he will be walking around like that. <laughs> and this is Sharmaji according to that. And on other days, he is wearing a cap different from that, like a, what do you call it, house, home guards. Home guards, he was one of the home guards. So he was wearing a uniform and a cap meant for that one. And he, nobody could recognize him. In the time of war, he wore the dress that was required. And after that, he came back and wore the other cap. Exactly the same thing happens to the bacteria. When there is too much infection of filth in the body, then these germs wear a different uniform, go and clean up. They are in the cleaning up team. They clean up those germs, uh, filth from the body, and when it's gone, they wear a different uniform. It's the same bacteria in your body which transforms into different bacteria. The term for filth in the Hindi is called mala. Mala means filth. When there was an epidemic in New Delhi, a malaria disease was spreading all over. Some few people who believed in nature cure, they asked us, well, how will you uh, deal with this situation? We said, clean up the mala area. <laughs> this is mala area where the filth is. Then malaria goes in. That's but then how simple. come suddenly at one point in time, many people develop malaria or smallpox mm. or something mm. like that? There was a there was a play written by Bernard Shaw, mm -hmm. the man and the microbe. 
in which two microbes meet each other and talk to them. He says, uh, what's your target? You are going to that village? What's your target? 30. Then next day they meet. He says, oh, I heard 300 people died. He said, target is 30. You are greedy, Karo. No, I killed 30. Fear killed the rest. <laughs> so just to say an example, most of the time when you take antibiotics, Antibiotics doesn't kill only the bad germs. It first kills the good germs. Before giving injection, they will give you a form and ask you to sign different places. You say, okay, doctor, I will sign all these places, but you sign this, this small slip. The slip says, I guarantee that none of your good bacteria will be killed. I will kill only the bad bacteria. Oh, are you kidding? I am not going to sign that paper. I will tell you ahead of time, your good bacteria will die first. Are you crazy to take that vaccination? Definitely not. We should not take that vaccination. So even antibiotics? In antibiotics, definitely not. Hmm. So, I don't know, like there are lots of stats on uh, vaccines. Yeah. For example, uh, mortality rates due to certain diseases before the vaccines and after the vaccines were introduced. Some cases, there have been zero cases of uh, these diseases anymore since the introduction of the vaccine. Polio is a good example. They normally will know mm -hmm. about that. I couldn't get the question. Oh. Um, yeah, so you're saying vaccines are bad for you? But yeah. some diseases have been pretty much wiped out due to vaccines. That's what they say, right? They say we have eradicated smallpox with vaccination. Yeah. Mm. Have they? I don't know. No. More and more smallpox is again and again. No, but polio, for example, I think statistics seem to indicate that uh, it has fallen at least from earlier. I'll, I'm telling you the truth. When they eradicate smallpox with vaccination, they have produced 40 more different kinds of diseases. Also? Mm. The phase of the disease has changed, but it has become more dangerous. One of them is autism. Autism is a side effect of smallpox vaccination. Not always. The mother was vaccinated, and the child was growing normally. But suddenly we found out the child has got autism. And they traced back, so many research has been done, Trace back to vaccination. Not only autism, ADD, ADHD, all kinds of diseases, all the names I can't even remember. So many different kinds of diseases are the result of vaccination. Not only vaccination, every medicine is like that. I just now told you the story of Viox. Like that every medicine is causing more and more diseases. <coughs> medicine. So let's not do the sin of meddling with nature. Coming back to... I have uh, one question. Sir. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's not related also, but it just came to my mind. And, uh, okay. Earlier you were talking about we cannot consume everything, and uh, even with plants. And you mentioned about <coughs> marijuana, for example. Mm. What? You mentioned about marijuana, for example. Marijuana. Yeah. But there are also like... Of course, I agree with you. There are so much of information they overload us with and we cannot just buy everything. Medical use of marijuana. Yeah, but this, for example, there have been cases of where it's also like countering the medical practice, practitioners as well. Where one the juice says, of the leaf and stuff like this. And also the oil and some persons, mm. for example, mm. who's got HIV and he, he's not able to like, uh, it's, he's losing his appetite. He consumes marijuana, which is also in many ways a natural form. Increases his appetite and he starts consuming more food. Which in any in my, in this case helped him save his life too in a way, right? So what's your opinion on that? No, I just wanna. <laughs> Beautiful question, but the idea is the information is wrong. One thing is inducing appetite unnaturally is not healthy. If a person does not have appetite, he should fast until hunger returns. That's our approach. A patient is now under treatment in Bangalore 
for the last 10 days he has not had appetite. He tries to drink a little bit of tender coconut water. Mm. He is satisfied with half, that's all. He doesn't want. He is not eating for the last 12 days. Nothing happened to him. Every day he is passing motion, some black stuff is keeping on coming. Four times he takes Tona. Tona is mini animal. And still, the matter is coming up. There is a hard place in the uh, belly. Until that hardness comes out, all the filth goes out, it will still be hard. We have to wait. Like the patient I told you about the kidney problem. Did I tell you about that? But my concern was like, also since marijuana is quite associated to our culture as well, in many ways it's referred to a lot of species <laughs> or people who have been consuming, even if it regards to the image of Shiva is always like associated with marijuana. How come this like, I mean, not trying to deviate too much? No, but no, even it's all absolutely uh, pertinent question. All that I'm saying is, our science says food alone should be our medicine. Medicine alone, food alone, medicine should be your food. And what is this? No, marijuana is what? not food. Okay. Is it food? Can you eat it? Definitely it? not. I mean, you can, <laughs> so in a way, you can, you can, can use it no, for food as well. Maybe not. Eat the flour? Yeah, people yeah. make astro. Eat it like a food. They don't do it like that. They because smoke. I think it's more of a practice where it's also considered like no. anti-authority, so they kind of banned it completely, but in many ways I can imagine if we can make uh, curry leaves chutney, we can also make marijuana chutney. chutney. <laughs> 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 to add to this question, it's very confusing and while I don't distrust you, how am I to take your word as the absolute definitely, truth? Definitely, don't take and like word. For example, let's say I have a child making a decision not to vaccinate my child. Or if I am in a mosquito infested place, mm -hmm. not to use a mosquito net. You know, these are all decisions to be mm -hmm. made practically. Yeah. So, with all this information, is there some kind of even little bit conclusive evidence that Nature mm -hmm. Cure is able to show, you know, mm -hmm. that by which mind gets more uh, trusting or relaxed, you know, like this? See, that's, that's such challenging question what makes mm -hmm. the whole discussion <laughs> very interesting. Mm -hmm. If you don't have challenging questions, it's only one one way dialogue, you see. Yeah. There should be some challenging question, I should be able to answer it. You should be able to convince, get convinced. Don't follow anything I said if it is not convinced. Because I'm only saying my experience. It's not enough to know only my experience. You have to learn from all different sources. And what convinces you should, you should follow. There are so many situations. Don't use mosquito net, I'm not saying. Mosquito net to prevent mosquitoes from biting you? <laughs> sure, definitely use it. It's not killing them, no, it's not killing you. We are not allowing them to bite you. Oh, it's nature, let them bite. I'm not saying that. <laughs> definitely not. At the same time, if the environment around, place around you does not have stagnant water, mosquitoes will not come there. And we have to keep our clean place clean is what, I, from the beginning I am saying hygiene promotes health. And healthy living is that Healthy living. So even if a mosquito bites you when you are following healthy lifestyle, you will immediately see that there will be a small bulge. And that means it will not allow the mosquitoes, what you call saliva or something to enter the body. Immediately the body is arresting it there from circulating in the blood. A healthy body will immediately do that. Mm. And it will throw that filth out before it gets valid. A dog bite. A dog bit me and it died also the next day, not because... <laughs> 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 I don't think happened to me. <laughs> you did 